Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, today we will continue with our lecture on chapter 5. Okay, last week we talked about currency futures. So, today we will talk about currency options, another type of derivative instrument that we have in currency market. Okay, alright. What is the currency option? Last week I did talk about the difference between forward futures and option so today we will go in detail about currency option option is also a contract that gives the buyer the option the right to exercise or to use the option in order to buy or to sell a standard amount of an available currency at an exercise price within a specific time period Okay, it is also another contract, Anana, but this contract gives the buyer of the option. The person who buy the option, okay, will get the right, okay, to exercise, meaning, or another uh, meaning is to use the option to buy or to sell a specific amount, a standard amount of currency at, at, ex, at an exercise price within a specific time period. It's okay. Kejap lagi kita faham eh. It act like a coupon. Macam ni lah. For example, you go shop. Okay. At Park Sen. And you spend 100 ringgit there. At the counter, the cashier give you a coupon. Because you spend this 100, you get a coupon that allows you to buy a mini frying pan at 10 ringgit. Okay. So, kalau you tak belanja apa-apa, you tak dapatlah coupon apa-apa. So, since because you spend something, the Park Sen give you a coupon that allow you, that allows you to buy a mini frying pan at 10 ringgit. So, 10 ringgit ni is actually the exercise price. The price that you have the right to buy the pan. Okay? The pan. Okay? So, the 10 ringgit is the exercise price or nama lain dia strike price. Let's say, the coupon will expire in 3 months. If on the last day, okay, the last day lah maksudnya, uh, after 3 months, you pergi pula dekat vaksin, you buka-buka handbag you, uh, wallet you, first you, you find the coupon, okay, rupanya belum matang lagi, today is the last day, and you find out that the spot price or the current market price of the pen is RM30. Harga dekat pasar raya, pen tu RM30. But if you use your coupon, you can only buy at ten ringgit. Okay, so the spot price or the market price is higher than the exercise price in this case. Okay, so what would you do? Will you buy the pen at thirty ringgit, or will you will or will you buy the pen at ten ringgit by using your coupon? Okay, of course you will use your coupon. You will exercise your coupon to buy the pen. Why? Because you can buy it at a cheaper price. Okay, in this case. Uh, it is uh, profitable for you to buy or to use or to exercise your coupon all right, or your option to buy the pen. But if you pergi pasar raya or the last day of the coupon tu, the last day of the coupon uh, can be used, you pergi-pergi tengok the market price of the pen is RM8. Okay. Of course, when you compare with the coupon, all right, the exercise price is RM10. Okay. Kalau beli guna kupon RM10. If you buy at the market price, the price is only RM8. So, you will not use the kupon to buy the, the to buy the pen. Why? Because it will cost you RM10. So, you akan rugi. Baik, you beli pada harga pasaran only will cost you RM8. So, you have the right. No one can force you to buy the pen at RM10. Alright, paksa tak boleh paksa you. You kena beli harga RM10. Tak boleh beli harga RM8. No, because... The coupon actually uh, belongs to you and you have the right nak guna ke tak nak guna. Okay, so now, now let's get back to the option. Tadi contoh coupon pasal raya lah. Uh, the idea, the concept of option sama macam coupon. So now let's get back to the option. In order to gain the right to exercise or to use the option, buyer kena bayar premium. In order to buy option, you have to pay the premium. So the premium is actually the price of the option. Okay, you akan bayar premium to to whom? To the seller of the option. Okay, buyers are normally MNC, traders, businesses, banks, client. Alright, so those are normally the buyers of option. So these are the parties that will have the right, okay, to use the option or not. Okay, sometimes buyers is called holder. Tapi tak ada dalam ni eh. Holder or taker. Alright, 
Okay, next one is sellers. Sellers are normally banks or financial institution. These are the parties who issue the option. Okay, sometimes we call sellers as um, writers or issuers. Okay, now let's move on to forward and futures versus option. Let's take a look at uh, the most or the main differences between forward and futures versus option. Okay, for forward and futures, in order for you to open the contract, you don't have to pay any premium. But in order for you to enter into option contract, untuk beli option contract, you have to pay the pre premium. Okay? Uh, buyer has to pay the premium to the seller. And then in the forward and futures, both party, buyer and sellers of the contract, forward ke, futures ke, must fulfill the contract. If you enter forward contract to buy USD, at the maturity, so you have to buy at the maturity. Seller pula have to sell the currency at the maturity. However, for the option, the buyer has the right or not. Okay, eh, no, no, always has the right or option whether to use or not. Okay, the option. Seller pula, dia tak the right. The seller only has the obligation to fulfill if the buyer exercise the right. Macam Paxson tadi, okay? You pergi bawa kupon, you ada hak untuk beli pen, frying pen tu pada harga RM10. Even tu harga pasaran RM30 since the Paxson is the issuer of the coupon. Nak tak nak, the Paxson has the obligation to sell the pen to you at RM10. Okay? Alright. So, the characteristic of an option, the first one, let's take a look at types of option that we have. Option that gives you right to buy pre-specified currency or available amount of currency is called call, is called or also known as call option. Sebab call tu panggil, maksud kita nak beli. So, kalau you beli option macam kupon tadi, you have the right to buy currency. Alright, kita panggil the call option. But, if you buy option, okay, you beli option, what type of option? You Buy option that give you right to sell currency, that is what we call put option. Ha, berbeza. Tadi right to buy currency, this one give you the right to sell currency. But in order for you to have the right to sell the currency, you kena beli dulu option ni. Okay? Next is, next is underlying asset. Okay. Any option contract will give you the right to buy any specified asset. So, in our case, in our case, FIN 542 ni, our underlying asset would be the currency lah. For example, if you buy USD call option, maksudnya you have the right to buy USD currency. If you buy USD put option, alright, so the USD put option will give, will give you the right to sell USD currency. So, the currency is actually the underlying asset that you want to buy or you want to sell. Okay, exercise price. Okay, like I told you just now, exercise price is the price that the buyer will use in order to buy or to sell from the writer. Next, we have spot price. Okay, spot price, also known as the current price of the underlying currency. You have to know the spot price because it is important for you to compare under the spot price dengan exercise price. Kalau you tak ada spot price punya information, you uh, you you cannot decide either you can use, should use the option or not in order to buy or to sell the currency. And then the premium. The premium is the price of the option. Uh, like I told you just now, option is not free. In order for you to gain the right, you have to pay the premium. So again, what is premium? Is It is the price of the option. And how uh, the price of option or premium is determined, it is determined by the demand and supply of option traded. And then last sekali expiration date. Every option contract has a maturity. Okay, the expiration date is actually the last day the holder can exercise his option. And the currency anak-anak is considered worthless, tak ada nilai. Alright, if the option is not exercised at the maturity date. Let's say you bawa kupon tu dah expired, you can no longer use the kupon to buy the frying pan. Ha, kalau dia dah kata 31st July is the last day, you pergi 1st August pun you can buy the frying pan at RM10. But it depends juga. When we talk about 
the maturity date it depends on the style of option that you has entered to you have entered to kalau you uh, beli option jenis american style you can exercise the option at any date prior or at maturity ha, you boleh exercise guna option you uh, any date before or on the last day or at the maturity itself but if you buy Europe, European style uh, option you can only exercise the option uh, on the last day or on the maturity date itself so European style ni nampak a bit bias lah American style nama pun American style it is a free country so you can freely exercise your option on any date prior or before or at maturity okay so that's all about the characteristic of, of an option we shall continue in second video